The 80s brought many influential models, but this list is not about those well-known machines. Instead, it will cover those forgotten models that didn't stand the test of time that well. So get ready for a trip down memory lane to revisit those most obscure cars you won't see on the road anymore. These are some of the cars from the 1980s that people forgot. First on our list is the Pontiac Trans Am GTA. According to most car fans, the Trans Am was the best version of the third generation Pontiac F-Body. It debuted in 1987 and was the top of the range Firebird on offer. This package was available until the 1992 model year and was produced in relatively limited numbers. The secret weapon of the GTA was its engine and WS6 handling package. The initial models had a 350 V8 with 210 horsepower, while later models could reach 245 horsepower. The WS6 package offered unmatched road holding and braking capabilities since it consisted of four disc brakes. It had stronger sway bars, special wheels, and performance tires as well. Pontiac has created a car so new, so different, it will fire your imagination like no other car ever built. It's called Fiero. Next on the list is the Pontiac Fiero. In the 1980s, everybody expected another GTO from Pontiac. However, they got a small sports car similar to what something Italians would build. It was a bold move for Pontiac to introduce a compact rear-wheel drive car with the engine positioned in the center and pair it up with a 5-speed manual transaxle gearbox. For the standards of the day, this was the most advanced American production model. Car customers were hyped by the appearance of the Fiero, with its cool modern design and advanced technology. The initial response was more than expected, as in 1983, sales figures were over 130,000 cars. Unfortunately, Pontiac didn't develop the Fiero, and early models were badly put together. The engine power was not that great, and the interior was cramped. GM responded by upgrading the car, and by the end of the 80s, the Fiero was a solid sports car with 150 horsepower from a 2.8 liter V6 engine. This is Ford's latest award winner, the new Thunderbird SC. It's not only Motor Trend's 1989 Car of the Year, it's further evidence Ford is winning the world over. Next on the list is the Ford Thunderbird Super Coupe. In 1989, Ford released the 10th version of the iconic Thunderbird. It was sleeker and more sophisticated than before, thanks to its reworked platform. To restate, this was a luxury coupe that had no interest in being athletic. However, Ford's engineers delivered what many in the muscle car community would call a compelling performance model with the Thunderbird Super Coupe. Just like the Turbo Coupe, the SC had a smaller engine, but this time they supercharged it to achieve higher performance. The 3.8 liter V8 got a supercharger, an intercooler, and a high-tech motor management system delivering a respective 210 horsepower. Its zero to 60 acceleration time was just 7.5 seconds. It's time for you. Next on some of the 80s cars we forgot about is the 1981 Imperial. In 1981, Chrysler made one last attempt to revive its Imperial luxury brand by releasing a compelling personal luxury coupe. Lee Iacocca, who rescued Chrysler from bankruptcy in the late 1970s by moving there from Ford, worked on this project specifically. He hoped to replace the Mark Coupe success at Chrysler, which he had at Lincoln. The 1981 Chrysler Imperial was a two-door coupe based on the Chrysler Cordova or Dodge Murata platform. On top of that, they powered it with a 318 V8 engine. The design was contemporary, with several classic cues, like a slant rear and hideaway headlights. But all in all, it was an aesthetically pleasing luxury car. Although Chrysler invested a lot of marketing and even used Frank Sinatra as the spokesman for the new model, sales were disappointing. Time now. Place any road USA. Action. Creation of a new personal sport coupe. Ford EXP. Next on our list is the Ford EXP. Ford unveiled this small two seater in 1982 marking their attempt to fight those affordable foreign sports coupes. 
The EXP was a genuine two-seater and the first Ford two-seater model since 1957 with their Thunderbird. However, they produced them with weak, small four-cylinder engines and outdated front-wheel drive. That right there is what killed Ford's attempt to make the EXP the Mustang's little brother. However, it was an interesting car and a cool attempt by Ford in the mid-80s. The new 1986 Cadillac Cimarron. Next on our list of some of the 80s cars we totally forgot about is the Cadillac Cimarron. Today, almost all American luxury brands have downsized their lineup, offering more affordable and compact versions of their big sedans. But back in the early 80s, this move was something still unheard of and hard to understand. In those days, Cadillac had somewhat of an identity crisis, so they sought a way to reinvent themselves to fight their foreign competitors. After long meetings involving their product development managers, they decided to introduce a small Cadillac with a lower price to attract more customers. Cadillac didn't have a compact platform, so they went to Chevrolet. They used the underpowered four-cylinder engine and underwhelming Cavalier chassis. Cadillac rebadged the Cavalier as a Cimarron and gave it a new name and some fancy new trimmings, but still it wasn't enough to distinguish it from the regular Cavalier. Sales were poor and Cadillac was under fire from their brand loyalists for ruining their image. All over the industry, the Cimarron was a laughing stock and remained until this day one of the worst examples of downsizing ever. For that reason, most people believe this model should remain forgotten. See, there you have it. Forgotten cars of the 80s? Yep. Next on our list is the Pontiac Grand Prix 2 Plus 2. Most domestic car buyers were surprised when Pontiac introduced an interesting 2 Plus 2 package for its popular luxury coupe in 1986. It was a muscle car the company lacked since the late 60s, but best of all, it was an interesting version of the Grand Prix, which was a boring car in the 80s, similar to the Monte Carlo SS Aero Coupe. The Grand Prix 2 Plus 2 used the same platform, rear glass and rear spoiler they intended for NASCAR races. Unfortunately, Pontiac didn't provide the 2 Plus 2 with an exciting performance for street use, since all cars got the 305 V8 delivering 165 horsepower. However, the Grand Prix 2 Plus 2 handled much better than the Aero Coupe. That was because it had gas-filled shocks, stiffer springs and sway bars, as well as high-performance tires, which were all part of the standard package. Pontiac produced this model for two years in which they made 1,225 cars. These are the men who built Mustang SVO who made the engine turbocharged and intercooled, the shocks gas-filled Coney's, the tires Goodyear NCT's, who put disc brakes on all four wheels, and this is Mustang SVO. Next on the list of some of the 80s cars we forgot about, the Ford Mustang SVO. The third generation Ford Mustang appeared as a 1979 model. It brought necessary modernization to the Mustang. The so-called Fox body Mustang was sleeker, more modern and aerodynamic. It was also somewhat lighter and nimbler, which reflected in the performance. However, the biggest news was the introduction of the turbo engine, a state-of-the-art device at the time. Ford's Special Vehicle Operations SVO department introduced a special Mustang SVO for 1984. It featured a 2.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with 175 horsepower, a lot of power for a small engine. The lightweight 1984 Mustang SVO and its powerful engine were huge hits. This kit gave the small Mustang the stopping power of four-wheel disc brakes, the responsive handling of a stronger suspension, and the precision of a sharper steering system. In 1985, SVO gave the third-generation Mustang an astounding boost in power to 205 horsepower. The Lincoln Town Car, please. Yes, sir. But the Lincoln Town Car stands apart and whether you choose it for its unparalleled spaciousness or graceful ride, you'll know there's nothing like a Lincoln. Next on our list of some of the 80s cars we forgot about, the Lincoln Town Car. The early 80s brought some much needed downsizing to American sedans. Those enormous cars with monster engines were a thing of the past. 
Lincoln responded by presenting the popular town car they built on Ford's venerable Panther platform. They powered it with a 5.0 liter V8. The town car was a recognizable boxy shaped sedan with a big chrome grille and bumpers. A comfortable ride. It was a typically styled luxury model and buyers loved its proportions. Soft ride and plush interior. If you think the thrill's gone out of driving, ease yourself into this. The 1980 Mercury Capri RS. Next is the 1980 Mercury Capri RS. The introduction of the third generation Mustang had a big influence on Mercury. This is because the brand got its own version in the form of the Capri in 1979. The Capri was new and featured a unique front end design. Since it was a Mercury product, it was more upscale than Ford. But other than a few aesthetical changes, it was identical to the Mustang. As the performance version, Mercury introduced the RS model, featuring a 2.3 liter turbocharged engine delivering just 135 horsepower. Performance was expectedly bad, but the car looked cool with a big air intake on the hood, RS badge, and a rear spoiler. Today, those RS models are quite rare, although not that valuable or sought after by car collectors. Why is our Citation X11 such a hero with performance-minded Americans? Let's ask single person. Citation X11, super car. The handling is impressive, yet I've got 40 cubic feet of space here for all my toys. Last on our list of some of the 80s cars that we forgot about for one reason or another, is the 1981 Chevrolet Citation X11. The Chevrolet Citation X11 is an interesting car. It is a compact front-wheel drive hatchback Chevrolet produced from 1980 to 1985. But it had a somewhat powerful V6 engine and muscle car looks. This car straddled the line between the two American automotive markets it seemed to aim for, the hot hatchback and the compact muscle car. Chevrolet needed the Citation since it was a modern model to compare with the imported cars. And it came in a wider range of flavors. The X11 featured a 2.8 liter V6 engine and 135 horsepower. Despite the fact that it doesn't sound like much today, it was solid power for the time. But the X11 had a few more features, such as a sports-tuned suspension, sharper steering, and better brakes. From the outside, you can differentiate the X11 by its special bulged hood and trim details. However, the magazine testers of the day spoke highly of the X11. In fact, they said it was much more than just a stronger engine and appearance package. Well, there you have it, some of the 80s cars we forgot about for one reason or another. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you have any comments, leave them down below. If you have one of these cars, let us know or post it on our Facebook page. Search for the Boca Brothers on Facebook and post your pictures there. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell for future video notifications. This is Danny B of the Boca Brothers Classic Car Reviews. Again, thank you so much. We'll catch you next time.